Okay, in today's tutorial I'm going to combine the sky that I did in a previous painting with more kind of light, well, water and foreground elements. I'd just like to say an enormous thank you to the people that have already shown me support over at my Patreon page. It's really motivated me to do more of these. I'd love to do several a week eventually if I get enough support to move to do this full time. If you're interested to know more about that, there is a, a link down in the description. Okay, so I'm going to begin by creating a custom size canvas. I want it to be a little bit taller in terms of the overall rectangle shape. An A4 would be around sort of 210 by 290 something, uh, but I'm going to make this a little bit taller, so sort of around 210, I'm going to make it about 240, and I'm going to change it to millimetres. So 240, and then I need to adjust this to about 300. So I'm going to insert the sky image that I've already done on a previous tutorial. So I'm going to just go to Insert, Insert Flat Image, and Photos, and I have it saved here as a JPEG. So I've just inserted it, it's just a flat image, so I don't have any of the layers that I had on the other file when I was creating it, but I still have that saved, so that's fine. I'm just going to reformat this so it fits this rectangle. So I've created a little bit extra there in terms of the space that I can now use. I think what I'll do, just to get rid of that ugly white bar at the bottom, I'm just going to go to my brushes, I'll go to airbrush, hard brush, and just get rid of that. It doesn't really matter, I'll, I'll be going over it with various things anyway, but it's just not a very nice thing to look at when you begin. Now the first thing I'm going to do, because I'm going to do a kind of water horizon line, you would get a pretty straight line on the horizon. Obviously, in reality, you get an ever so slight curve to it, but you can, it's barely perceptible to the human eye anyway. That the planet is so huge, and, and the uh, the curve of the planet is so slight, you know, gradual as you look across the horizon. It looks pretty much like a straight line. So, currently, based on the the current image, it isn't actually a straight line as of yet. So, I'm going to fix that first of all. The way that I'm going to do that is to create another layer, and I'm simply going to I'm going to use this dark blue. I can always fade it off near the horizon if I want to, but I generally want to bring that colour and horizon point a bit higher up. So now that I'm on that second layer, I can use the same brush again. And I'm just going to fill that entire layer. Now it's on top of the other image, so therefore it's not destroying it at all. And now what I can do is I'm only going to change what's on that particular layer and I can adjust that particular shape. So I'm going to just make a decision where I want the horizon to be. I kind of want it to be about here. Now it's a very, very sharp line, so I just want to soften that with the blur tool. So now it seems to be more in keeping with the kind of general feel of the rest of the brush marks. But I'm also going to soften it slightly as it gets towards the horizon. So I've got the eraser tool selected now. I'm going to turn the opacity of the, or the strength of the eraser way low, way down. And I'm just going to start taking some of that blue back a little bit. Now this is also useful in, in terms of creating a sense of some sort of bands in the water here, some sort of stripes. So I can allow for some smaller, thinner stripes as it goes nearer the horizon, but as it comes sort of further down, then you'd expect to see sort of larger bands. Okay, so I'm going to create another layer. I think what I want to do is just soften the, the blue slightly. I've got the still the colour palette that I used for the sky available to me, so I'm kind of using some of those as a cue because some of the, the colours that appear in the water is obviously going to be similar to the colours that you'd expect to see in the sky. What you might find is that the colours that appear in the water are, are a kind of mix of the colours that you would see in the sky, so not necessarily that orange or that blue but then the effect of those kind of mixed together. So you might get some of the kind of color range that appears more in the center area. So it may be more of a kind of maroon or a kind of salmon color as they kind of mix together. So what I need to do now is just change my brush setting to a soft brush. I'm on the airbrush for the majority of this painting. And I just want to soften that blue back a little bit. I think some of this light from the sky needs to, needs to sort of encroach a bit more. But on this layer, I'm also going to be adding some of the warmth in there. The kind of middle area has got these kind of, well, if I show you one here. In fact, I'm going to pick this colour here, because this was one of the colours that I did use in the sky quite a lot, and it does represent something in this area. 
I may modify that slightly, but the mixture of the blue and that colour together should kind of get the kind of colour that's in the sky there anyway. So what I want to start doing now is getting some more definition on the kind of bands of water that go across because I'm going to have ripples in the in the in the water like waves, and so some bits will be um, sort of in the shadow of the light, and other bits will be it'll, the light will be hitting the top of the water. So what I want to do straight away is get some of the areas where the light is hitting the top. And waves undulate, so they're not going to be a perfect straight line anyway. So I don't, I don't need to worry about getting it absolutely perfectly straight. Not a problem. I might do some slightly softer ones kind of above there as well. If I wanted to just reduce the brush size and the opacity I can get a suggestion of more going off into the distance a little bit more but I don't really want to overkill that, I just want to give a slight suggestion. What I do want to do is come down a bit further now so the gaps between the waves is probably going to get greater. That is the sense of perspective, as you get closer the gaps will seem to get bigger. It isn't that the gaps or the dis distance between each wave is getting bigger, it's just that's the way it appears. So again, I'm not after a straight line, I'm after a kind of undulating shape. Now I'm going to go for one further down. Again, the distance between them is getting greater each time. Maybe the lines need to be less defined as well. And then maybe just this last section, I'm just going to turn the size of the brush up and just sort of get rid of that area, make it more of that nice maroon. Now I may choose to do some kind of land structure here. I might have it going um, up onto a sort of rocky beach. So the next thing I'm probably going to do is create another layer. And I think I might go back to my blue colors, but I'm going to choose a blue that's going to stand out and it's going to appear lighter if I just sharpen that up and show you. Now I'm going to do this gradually. In fact, I'm going to make this a slightly more greyed out version of that. It's not going to be quite as vibrant as it would be in the sky. And I think what I'd like to do for this is actually change my brush as well. So I've been looking through some of the, the brushes that are actually are available on the Procreate app. Um, I've not got around to creating my own yet, but that's certainly something I intend to do. But just looking through them, I found these ones in the elements and there's a couple of useful ones here for this particular piece. Now the one I'm going to use to begin with is called clouds. Now I'm just going to change it back to the default. I don't really want to customize this one at all. Well, it's a useful one. I don't know whether you can see, in fact, I might change it to a really bright color so you can see the effect of it. So I'm after the kind of breaking of the wave. So I'm after something that's looking quite turbulent and this looks like the right kind of um, texture for that. Now, obviously you can do all of this by hand, but then, you know, there's all sorts of different types of real brushes available when you're doing traditional painting so I don't see an awful lot of difference. It's about having the control to know where to put it that is more important. So I don't really see it as a, as a cheat, it's just a you know an efficient way of creating texture rather than doing every single little tiny detail by hand. That's something that I've done in the past and some, certainly something that I wouldn't say you shouldn't do. It's sometimes good practice but then there are other times where you just want to create the effect and you don't want to spend forever on the, the overall appearance. So I'm going to turn the opacity way down on that now and I'm going to turn the brush size down as well. And I want to start creating a sense that some of these waves are just sort of as they fold back in on themselves then they sort of crash and break and I'm just going to start building up a sense that there is a kind of broken wave here. Now it tends to be that it will fold in from a certain point on the wave. So it might break here and then it folds down. So it, there will be a point probably where it comes up to the top of this particular wave where you can see that I'm concentrating on the dark sort of band here. So imagine it breaks here at the top, it starts to fold in, fragment, and then at the bottom of that section it sort of breaks a bit more. So maybe you get a slight narrow kind of sharp starting point at the top and then it thickens and becomes less obvious where the, the line of it is as it goes further down. Now I'm not going to do that for the ones that are slightly further out, these are the, for the ones that start to break as they come sort of more ashore. So I might do a sense of a, another one down here. Okay, now I'm also going to use the dark blue again. I'm going to 
darken up a little bit more. I don't want to go too rich, I'm going to go quite a dull and yet dark blue. I'm going to go back onto the airbrush as well. So the texture I'm reserving mainly for the broken bits of water. But I do want to just exaggerate some of the dark areas around this particular shape because this is a more extreme shape compared to some of the other ones that are softer. Maybe underneath there's more of a sense of a shadow. And then as it extends over here as well, there's just more of a sense of a darker area as it becomes more textured. Do a bit more at the top. And then maybe more sort of underneath this wave as well. So the more sort of turbulent it gets, the more likely it is to cast shadows and things like that. Okay, I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to start focusing in on picking out some of the highlights. So we've obviously got the sun here, so that should definitely start to pick on some of the, the top areas of the actual water. I think to begin with I'm going to start introducing more light a bit more subtly, so I don't want to go straight for the yellows and the whites. I want to go for some kind of colours that might appear more in the centre, so I'm going to just find an area like this and just test that. So you can see it's brighter. It's got more warmth in it, but it's not overkill. And I'm going to turn the opacity way down, and I just want to start gradually picking out a slight sense of more lighter areas in this region. A bit like I want this to be, it's too orange, I think I want a slightly more pinky edge to it. I think that's slightly better. Okay, I'm just going to show you another brush that I found quite useful. So if I go to the brushes, again it's in the elements and it's in, well, it's actually quite appropriately called oceans. So I'm going to reset it, I'm going to show you what I did to actually adjust it. I didn't do very much, I've just changed it slightly. So if I show you there, you can see the effects of it. But I found that when I was layering it up, it, I just didn't like the effect. It was a bit too repetitive in terms of if I did like a zoomed out version, a smaller brush size, it was just too heavily textured. So what I decided to do was to increase the scale of it. Now you'll probably, you can see it, you'll probably see the, the graphic above adjust as I change the scale of it. If you put it way down, you don't see any of the texture at all. You put it sort of further up and then it, it becomes a much looser version of the same thing. So now when I come to use it, I get a much more subtle kind of breaking of texture. So I find that more useful. I'm gonna turn the opacity down now. And I'm going to start just suggesting some more things going on in this area. In fact, I'm not happy with that colour still. I think it still needs to be even more towards the pinks. And that's more like the kind of effect that I was wanting. So I'm just building up some textures here. I can go back and pick out some specific details by hand afterwards, but I'm just starting to increase sense that there's there's more going on here and if I want to then do more in the distance I perhaps just need to turn the brush size down and that texture will become closer together which is perfect for the sort of middle distance I guess as we get further in the distance you're not going to see the same level of texture anyway so I'm not too worried about that it'll tend to sort of smooth out and you'll see less of it so as you come further down you want a bigger brush size and it will start to space out that texture more Maybe on this foreground bit we can really go for some large texture on that. I think I will create another layer. I'm going to do the same again actually but with a different colour this time. So I'm going to go to the blues now and just see whether that shows up. So it does. And I'm going to start adding some of the similar kind of texture but in the, in the shadow of the, the wave. So there definitely would be similar kind of textures going on. In fact, I just need to make that perhaps a, a lighter, but turn the opacity way down. I think that'll be more effective. So I can go sort of like this. And there might be points where the two sort of kind of merge together a bit more. I'm going to create another layer. And I'm going to start now picking out some of the, the details by hand. So I'm going to go to my real in fact, I might pick it from the, the sky itself. So I'm not going for the white, I'm going for somewhere surrounding it. This may be too orange. I may decide that I want to do this more gradually, but 
you've got to test it and see what works. So I want to just gradually start introducing more of this kind of high-end warm colours. As soon as I start sort of adding it too much like that, it really doesn't look right. So I just want to build it up very gradually and then that effect will tend to make more sense. What I'll do is make a slightly or more orange version of it, and that will just help again build it up in layers. But why not just go even more orange again? I'm not filling in this whole area, so I'm not just you know turning this up and, and filling it in like that. I'm trying to use a broken kind of texture, so some of the blue will still show through in areas. I don't want it to be a solid mass of orange. I think that's very important to avoid that. I'm just adding more texture in there, some little dashes of this brighter colours, and it, by contrast, you know, some of the darker blues in that area too. So I'm going to perhaps really go for some, now I'm not going for the yellow yellow, I'm going for quite a white yellow and start introducing just a few touches of that brightest colour. So I'm trying not to add the the lightest colours in the middle of a blue area. I'm trying to pick out some more highlights within the orange or warmer areas. So we're just sort of further enhancing and, and heightening the light in that area on a warm bit. I think I'm going to just see if I turn the opacity way down. I just want to try adding a bit more of a definite warmth to that whole area because it is directly below the sun, so it should definitely have a, a significant kind of difference between this area and the surrounding areas. So I'm just a very soft version, in fact that's too much. I don't really want to start going over that area, I just want to keep it maybe in this area above. Maybe extend that just within the warm bit so they can be slightly wider as well. Maybe have a touch more of it in this area. Now it's starting to feel like that the light is really drawing down into the water, so I think what I'm going to do next is go back to adding some more of the, the real lighter colours as well. So I've turned the opacity down to practically nothing, so it's sort of 1-2%, so and then the brush size up a bit. So I'm also just, just literally trying to bring that light down into the scene. So it's okay to create a sense of a haze going on in that area. It's really going to make that light seem like it's you know, a strong light source. And now what I'm going to do is perhaps just go further towards the, the lightest point. For this I'm going to turn the brush size way down and the opacity up a bit more and I'm just going to start picking out the light bits now. So I'm okay if some of these textures start to join up the light becomes so strong that it starts to just join up these areas and it becomes a solid kind of light area. That's a pretty bright sun so it should definitely have a strong reflection in the water as well. But I do feel that that blue needs to be less powerful so maybe I need to go to the warm colours actually just see if I can extend a sort of band of orange a bit more in that area. Yeah that makes more sense. So the power of that horizon line of the blue is less, perhaps that's just a bit too severe, but certainly a, a subduing of the power of the, the blue in that area is important, I think. And now I want to start introducing more of that yellow a bit higher up. It's making more sense and it doesn't clash quite as much. What I'm going to do is just go to quite a bright yellow at this point and just start to maybe join some of these areas up. Perhaps I shouldn't be any sense of a break in the uh, the water at that point. And then maybe I can work on the real white colour and bring a bit more of that in there as well. If I wanted to create another layer underneath that I could easily then use one of my yellows and I could add a bit more yellow underneath and it wouldn't interfere with the, the white that I've added but it would just perhaps just help fill in that area a little bit more with more of a warm tone and likewise I can use a bit more orange going off on the edges too. Just a touch more. 
just to sort of soften its position. Okay, um, I think the overall effect is working in terms of the light, but now I'm going to start thinking about some kind of more foreground details perhaps. So I'm going to create another layer for this, so I don't want to interfere with anything I've done so far. If I make mistakes, it's fine. I'm not going to interfere with the water effect that I've already created. So what I need to do for this, I'm going to create some middle distance sort of smaller rocks, or they appear smaller as they're in the distance, and I'm going to create another layer that are more foreground details. I might even do it more than two layers of them as well. But to begin with, I'm going to choose a colour here, I've already got pre-selected. Now it's this general kind of maroon colour, but I think I want a darker version of that. So I'm not quite black, but it is pretty dark. I'm going to turn the opacity up. In fact, I might change my brush for this. I don't want the hard edge of the, the hard brushes, but I do want it to be a little less soft. So I'm going for the medium brush, turn the opacity up. I need to change my brush size. So I can start adding some rock details in. Again, I want them to be sort of up here somewhere. This is going to appear the wrong colour initially, but that's fine. I can always knock it back, erase it, adjust it. I just want to start getting the forms in to begin with. So I'm using a darker colour just so I can see them. So I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to repeat pretty much what I've done, but with some slightly closer rocks. Now they are going in front of each other, but you'll you'll see in a moment that there is a good way of separating them. And then I'm going to create another layer. So this is going to be the most, well, the closest ones. So I'm just going to have just a suggestion of them being at the edges, maybe. So if I go back to my first layer, I can very simply, go onto the settings and I can turn the opacity down a little bit. It may become a bit transparent, but I'm just creating the overall effect at this point, so that's not a problem. Perhaps I'll just move the image so I can see, because this is perhaps the important area. So again, click on the end, and that feels about right. Now I can go into the, the next one and do similar again. So if I get rid of them completely, that, that's what's going to happen. I don't want to get rid of them completely, I want it to be like that. And now the most foreground layer should stand out a little bit more clearly. I hope you can see that on camera. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kind of cue from these colours so I can select the colour. I can turn the opacity up and then although I'm on a different layer I can go over that layer for now and just start to bring out the exact forms that I would like at this point. And then I can pick the next layer and I can repeat the process. can choose the darkest layer and I can really just define the closest rocks that I want now. So on this layer now, I don't want to really create too many more layers, so I'm just going to stick on the same layer and I'm going to start thinking about the, the impact that the light would be having on those rocks. So there's lots of water around, there might be you know, water that splashed upon those rocks at some point and they're going to be relatively reflective. So definitely want some highlights on areas so I'm going to go for if you can see this sort of colour here and I'll just show you the kind of colour I'm going for so it is a kind of a mixture of the colours that are in the scene generally I want to perhaps turn the opacity down somewhat but I want to just use it to start picking out a sense that the sun is sort of shining on the edges of some of these forms So I'm just going for all the edges that point towards the centre initially. I'm just doing the, the very outlines and then I might decide that there are some flat parts of the rock that require a bit more of a highlight as well. There's also going to be sort of the general ambient sort of blue affecting it as well. What I'm going to start doing is adding some shadows into the areas underneath. So there should, or rather reflections, there needs to be a sense that there's a broken sort of shadow underneath each of these rock areas. So I'm just going to go and experiment with different brushes, but I'm going to go back to my airbrush. And there should be definitely some broken sort of shadows underneath the rocks. It gives it a sense that it actually is in that environment though. So much like you'd have a, a reflection 
even when it's you know on an area where the, the water isn't deep you're still going to get a sense of anything that's above it is going to be reflected in the water underneath even further away structures like this it's going to have a sense of a reflection another thing i feel i need to do is just start to use the, the strongest light and just in areas now i want to be very careful with this that was too strong perhaps i'll go for the the warmer kind of orange and i just want to pick out some of the brightest points on the rock i want to do this very sparingly if i overkill this it's going to look kind of silly and also within that maybe just a hint of the the brightest reflections too but again if you do too much it, it is has the opposite effect perhaps you're going for again as i was saying before off towards the, the edges you're going to get some of this darkness i'm going to start bringing in just a little bit more of that darkness into underneath the wave here I'm also going to use it to subdue some of the, the highlights on the rocks that are a little bit bright in places. So I'm just going to knock them back slightly. Perhaps I will just ever so slightly bring out a few highlights in the, the water as well. A few points at which the light catches it the most. There could even be some of the yellow affecting the Again, subtlety is important, it's easy to overdo it, looking at it a bit again, I feel like I've overdone that, so I'm just knocking it back slightly. But some of the impacts I'm going to leave there, I'm just taking it away from the edges, so the centre area is going to have that sort of impact and that's fine. I might go back to the blue and just tidy up the edges so it, again, as I was explaining before, it looks sort of curl in from the, the top and then come crashing down here. I say crashing, it's not a big wave, so it wouldn't crash, but if it was a, a larger wave, that's what it was. It's a sort of miniature version of the same thing. I think I'm going to use the same blue, and I'm just going to turn the opacity way down, and I'm going to start adding just a suggestion of texture in the rocks as well. Not too much, I want it to be just slight. But I just want to break up the, the flatness of the rocks a little bit. effect of that. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time refining up some of the details but we're pretty much there. I'm just using one of the brushes in the water section, so I'm using the water flicks and I've just adjusted the size limits slightly because I don't want them to be able to do massive splats, so I just want to turn them down slightly and I just want to create a sense in places that there's some splashes and the water's breaking so you might have it sort of raising up a little bit. Might even just one or two areas like this, just have a sense that the, the light is catching it as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for today. As with all the tutorials I show you, I try to do them so that they fit to this format without zooming in too much. So if it was going to be a full piece of work, I would go into more detail and I would zoom into areas of it and just refine and, and really get the, the overall finish of it a bit stronger. But in terms of demonstrating the overall effect, I'm quite happy that I've managed to get that across. Again, a massive thank you to the people that already support me over at Patreon. If you're interested to know more about ways that you can support me to make more content like this, please check the link down in the description. Otherwise, check out my playlists, 
and see the other kind of tutorials that I actually create. Catch you here again. Thanks for watching.